Hello my friends and welcome back. In this video we are of course going to be doing a little bit of aquascaping. You may have seen my previous videos on the Superfish QBQ30 and you may have realised how fond of it I have become. And for that reason I decided to go ahead and buy myself one and today we're going to be aquascaping it, getting it full of water and ready for the shrimps. Now before we get into that please remember to drop a like or dislike below depending on how you feel on this video. Please leave a comment below as well to let me know how I've done on this build and if you've enjoyed it or not. And also hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber of my channel make sure you subscribe now because then you'll get to see more videos like this as and when I release them. So this is a bit of a new format for me in terms of content. I haven't done a lot of freshwater stuff for a while and I haven't done a lot of aquascaping for a very long time. I think it's been at least four years since I've done a planted tank. So I've had this tank in my shed for about two weeks now and I've been slowly collecting the bits and pieces together to get it set up. I'm going for a fairly classic style, I think it's called Iwagumi, where you have some rocks as your main aquascape and then you have plants interspersed amongst those. Now traditionally I think you have one or two species of plants in that style but I'm going to have quite a few more than just one or two species in here. I'll go through the plants in a second and then for the substrate I'm going with a JBL substrate. This is Manado. Now some people like to put a plant base below this which is a fertilizer base. However I don't want these plants to grow too quickly. I'd quite like them to grow fairly slowly and from the previous setup of this particular tank I'm aware that the light isn't the brightest, but it will grow plant at a nice rate. So I really don't want them to um, grow too fast and become leggy. However, the Manado substrate is perfect for this because it is very porous and it can absorb nutrients out of the water and then give them back to the plants as and when the plants require them. It's also really high in iron, so it will give the plants the iron that they need to grow. I've just given the substrate a bit of a rinse just to get rid of any dust and I've done that in the bag itself. So all you do is cut the lid open, put your hose into the bag and then allow the water to slowly come out of the bag with all of the dust. And that's the substrate in quite nicely. I like a deep substrate when it comes to plants. And also this particular substrate being so porous will actually act a little bit like a filter as well. So having it this deep will help quite a bit when it comes to the filtration. We're gonna to have to add some hardscape to this tank now. And I've gone with the gray aquascaping rock. It's a very classic look. However, it's very impactful when done on a dark substrate. So here are these rocks after having a quick rinse. And you can see putting water on them actually brings out a lot of the detailing here. Um, amongst this rock, you can see the quartz veins. Next thing we need to discuss then is the plants. So I've gone for a few species of plant that you don't commonly see that often actually in a lot of builds and I find quite interesting and I've uh, actually never used before. I'm also using the Tropica 1 to grow plants mainly as well just because I don't want any snails in here. So fingers crossed the other plants I've got haven't got any snails in them. So the plants I'm using we've got Marcella Hasuta. Do correct me in the comments if I pronounced that wrong. And I've got Litterella Uniflora. Both of these plants are ones I've never seen before but according to Tropica they are easy so that means I won't need to use any CO2 and they can also grow in reasonably low light. The other plant I've got is Cryptocorin parva. Now that is a Cryptocorin obviously but it's one that stays pretty small which is ideal for this particular setup. These three plants also grow and spread by sending out little stolons um, from which the new plant and new leaf will grow. So they're good for carpeting and filling themselves in wherever you plant them. The other one I've gone for is a fairly unusual moss, Monoselenium um, pallia. And I like this moss because it's just got a very strange look to it. It's not um, very wiry like you see the other mosses. Uh, and then we've got some Salvinia in here. I'm only going to put a few pieces of this in there. The rest will go elsewhere. And then beneath that, we have 
um, a little bulb of tiger lotus. I just like the big leaves on the lotus compared to the relatively small leaves and everything else. I think the lotus large leaves will really stand out quite nicely. second thoughts now about putting this uh, moss onto the rocks because there's quite a lot of foliage in there already. I feel like putting more green over the rocks will just take out the impact of the rocks. So I'm going to not use the pellier. I'll use the pellier in a different different build. I'll just leave it in the tub for now. Let me know what you think about that, whether that was a good decision or not. But I feel like covering the rocks up with green is actually going to um, do more damage than good. All right then, all filled up now and looking pretty good. Now, we did have a few issues with a couple of floaters, specifically this one at the front here. It kind of just all went whoosh to the surface, so I had to replant that one. However, the majority of the plants stayed put and I'm pretty happy with the results. Now, obviously it's a bit cloudy because there was still a little bit of dirt within the substrate and on the rocks. Uh, and I've turned the filter on so we can deal with the dirt and it should clear within 24 hours or so. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the result from this build. In the next video, I'm going to be adding the livestock to it. So to start with, we're going to have some shrimps. However, I do plan on adding some fish and bits and pieces as well. So if you have any recommendations as to what you'd like to see in this tank, um, someone has already said baddis, which I think is a really good idea, specifically the scarlet baddis, um, I think would look really nice in this tank. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this build. Let me know whether or not you like the aquascape I've done. I'm pretty happy with it and I'm looking forward to seeing how it's going to grow out. I think it's going to be a bit of a jungle when it starts to get going in here. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to like the video uh, and subscribe to my channel if you have enjoyed it. And as always, thanks very much for watching and happy fish keeping.